Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Microcontrollers Hub. In past we have worked on Arduino and some low range performing microcontrollers. As there are some limitations on performing aspect, I have decided to start working on ARM based controllers and explore its features. So from today we are going to start a new video series in which we will cover all basics of Nucleus 64 board. In future videos I will demonstrate how we can use all of its features like GPIOs, ADCs and DMA. We will also use USART, SPI, I2C, USB communication examples. At the end, we will also use FreeRTOS and do some interesting projects with Nucleo64. So stay tuned to get updates on these projects. If you have tried some Arduino projects and want to learn some mid to high range performing 32 bit ARM controllers, then I must say you are in the right place. So without wasting time, let's dive into technical aspects of Nucleo64 board. There are different types of nuclear boards available in market. Depending upon number of pins available on main controller as well as the flash size available on the board. For this video series, we are going to use Nucleo 64 which has STM32G070RB controller from ST Microelectronics. This has 32-bit ARM Cortex M0 Plus core which supports up to 64 MHz. This particular board provides 128 kilobytes of flash and 36 kilobytes of static RAM. From software perspective, these all boards are more or less the same. So you can choose any one of these available boards to follow my projects. Apart from two I2Cs, four USART, two SPI, this controller also provides seven channel DMA, real time clock, multiple boot modes, CRC calculation unit. It seems we have an inbuilt temperature sensor available on chip. This block diagram provides overall features of this powerful 32 bit controller. Here is ARM Cortex M0 Plus CPU with serial wire debug interface. These are the all 5 GPIO ports and ADCs for interfacing external circuits. Here we can see DMA, flash memory, and SRAM. Then there is a supporting circuits like voltage regulator, crystal oscillator, PLL, reset and clock control units. In bottom section, we can see all communication modules like SPI, I2C, USART, also timer and watchdog modules. One more advantage is the board's layout, which is similar to Arduino, so it will allow us to use all external Arduino plugin modules available on the go. Now let us see steps to do software setup. In software development user manual, we will go to supporting ID section. There are four different options available here. First is embedded workbench for which we have to either buy the tool or use 30 days evaluation edition. Second one is Kiel MDK ARM toolchain which has 32 kilobytes code size limitation. Apart from these, you can also go with True Studio or System Workbench for STM32 software. In this video series, we are going to use Skill Toolchain because it is free, it has simple interface and I have some past experience of using this tool. So we will go ahead to download and install MDK ARM Toolchain. I will provide the link in description as well. One more tool which we are going to use is STM32QMMX. This tool has a key role in developing in STM32 projects. With the help of CubeMX, we can easily configure the ARM controllers and generate initialization code. This generated code can be directly imported in Kiel toolchain which will work as a base for our application. So I would recommend to go on STM32 CubeMX website, then download and install the latest version. The links to download all the software and the documents that we are referring are available in the description section. Now we have complete toolchain setup ready. In next video, I will demonstrate a step-by-step -step process on how you can use these tools by creating our first project. We will write simple code for LED Blink with the help of CubeMX and a Keel software. And then we will upload it on Nucleo64 board. So make sure to check our next video from this series. Till then, take care. I'm your host Varat Kulkarni, signing off.